Hi, I'm Karen. I'm a physiotherapist from Vancouver Island. And I actually have about 12 questions, but I'm going to only ask one. <laughs> and I, I, I think when I look at, when I am providing interventions to a, a child on the, on the spectrum, our probably present company uh, would be excluded from this, but sometimes the consistency and the continuity within the family framework um, is quite a challenge, and and you have you have a spectrum there. One is you know the can, the family is in constant crisis, so there there doesn't seem to be any uh, ability to provide continuity, or they go to every conference that and read every blog on the internet, so they are um, bandwagon jumpers, or you know so you you either got uh, total crisis to uh, over enthusiasm, and I just wonder if they're if you can provide, uh, you, you know, some, is there a way, uh, some wording that is, can be used professionally or to um, encourage continuity to try and grasp what kind of time frame a different strategies should be or could be uh, a, a tried for before you move on to another strategy? Um, just anything that you might have to offer in regards to continuity in a family framework. Okay, Jonathan and David, I think that one's for you too. <laughs> You're the guest. Oh, I'm the guest. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm trying to kind of be mindful of kind of my... Uh, Kind of what I, how to answer a question about promoting continuity um, and respecting where families are at when they're coming in and realizing you can only you know you have to take a family-centered approach as much as you do a child or a client-centered a client-centered approach um, and I think about the work by um, Marsha Fromm I think Marsha Fromm on uh, family resilience and the approach she takes is that even those those families at either ends of that if it is a continuum that you described, are, are incredibly resilient in that they're still, all, they're all getting by. And they're no more than getting by, they're coping the way that they believe that they can right now. Whether it's being in crisis and they're still showing up to see you, or the family is going and the, investing the resources to go to those conferences and to, you know, and they are bandwagon, they're searching, right? But they're searching with the best of intentions. Um, and that both are seeking out help through the best of intentions and to see, so in some ways, I admire both of those ends of the continuum, and in some ways, it's about sh maybe shaping or reinforcing that effort, right, and praising that effort for what it is, um, and keeping that positive focus, um, and encouraging, you know, and providing the options or the opportunities to remain more stable w with, you're saying, like, this is the course of action, the plan that we've decided on, um, how can I help you stick with this plan? You don't know, but coming from that positive, that positive orientation or strength-focused orientation can only help to promote that resilience that they're already bringing to you, whether it's, I'm so in crisis right now, but we're here, so you have, come and help us. You know, the fact is they made it. Um, or, you know, I just read this new thing that you didn't even know about, right, and they want to try it, um, but the fact is they're searching, so I, I, I don't know, I think that's the way I would approach a family. Like, that's just not the research, the client, the clinician side of me. Yeah, and I, I would certainly echo that, and, and it's, it's such a challenge when you have such a wide range of within the spectrum itself, but then the spectrum of families, and, uh, you know, inter and intra differences in families, so if I may be gender stereotypical, it's often one of the parents tends to do most of the reading and has most of the books read and earmarked and flagged and, and stickies, and the other side of the bed has very little read, uh, and uh, with lots of gentle reminders and leaving the book open at the breakfast table. Um, <laughs> So even within families, you have those struggles and how to, how, to, how to make that work and have both play on the same team. You know, I think for me, you, you can't, it's impossible, I think, to identify one key book or article or phrase to have a family move forward. But I think going back to Jonathan's work, if you look at sort of what is possible and what is changeable and where can you make a difference, I, I think I would come back to that social communication side of things. You know, how, how is it that you can, you can increase that social communication both within your family and then within your child to see that they can communicate differently? But I think that would be a, a reasonable place to start. So I, I think um, we're a sort of select audience today and it's important to remember that families of kids and youth without ASD 
go through their ups and downs. Uh, and we don't want to wear too many hair shirts. I think one of the things that can help stabilize the situation is really to have continuity amongst the professionals. Uh, and the current system in which youth are transitioned at about 18 or 19 to a completely new group of professionals doesn't actually fit in with the rest of everybody else's lives. And, and there are some parts of Canada now where the youth services will extend to 25, which, which actually is much better because it helps the person transition from secondary education either into work or into higher education. And I see many families who are under incredible uh, pressure and then have the additional burden of various of the professionals associated with them changing on a monthly basis and they have to go through all the stories all over again and all the historical expertise uh, disappears. So I think there are ways that professional groups could organize themselves better uh, to be more supportive. 